Good morning and welcome to Broadmeadow United Methodist Church. Here at Broadmeadow, no matter where you've come from or you're going, what you believe or doubt, what you are feeling or not feeling, what you have or don't have, and no matter whom you love, all of who you are is welcome into this community of faith by a God who loves you passionately. Thanks be to God. Our hymn of praise this morning is How Firm a Foundation. It's number 529 in the hymnal. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 5. Please rise in body or in spirit for the cross of Christ. How firm a foundation, ye saints of the Lord, he is laid for your faith. In his excellent word, what more can he say than to you he has said? To you who for refuge to Jesus have fled, fear not, I am with thee, O oh, be not dismayed, for I am thy God and will still give thee. I'll strengthen and help thee and cause thee to stand Upheld by my righteous omnipotent hand When through the deep waters I call thee to go The rivers of woe shall not be overflow For I will be with thee thy troubles to bless And sanctify to thee thy deepest distress The soul that on Jesus still leans for repose I will not, I will not desert to its foes that so though all hail should endeavor to shake, I'll never, no, never, no, never forsake. Good morning. Once again, welcome to Broadmeadow United Methodist Church, whether you are here or joining us online. We're so glad you are with us today. As we begin this time of worship, let's open up in prayer. God of peace, your call at times appears to divide us from one another. Help us to overcome our fears and respond in courage. Give us faith to trust the unity that is beyond our sight. Give us your eyes to recognize the signs before us. We ask this in the confidence of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please remain risen as we join together in our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed found in your bulletin, or 881 in your hymnal. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is the one true church, apostolic and holy, and it is that church's faith we now proclaim. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
Prayer for Illumination God of Wisdom, we eagerly seek your presence in our lives and in the world. By your Spirit, speak your word to us and give us your grace to recognize the abundant signs of your care for us so that we might be freed in an act to act in the world with courage and abandon. Amen. And our New Testament reading is from Hebrews eleven twenty nine through twelve two. By faith they crossed the Red Sea as if they were on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried it, they were drowned. By faith Jericho's walls fell after people marched around for them for seven days. By faith Rahab the prostitute wasn't killed for the disobedient because she welcomed the spies in peace. What more can I say? I would run out of time if I told you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and the prophets. Through faith they conquered kingdoms, brought down raging, brought out raging fires, escaped from the edge of the sword, found strength and weakness, were mighty in war, and routed foreign armies. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured and refused to be released so that they could gain better resurrection. But others experienced public shame by being taunted and whipped. They were put in chains and in prison. They were stoned to death and they were cut in two, and they died by being murdered with swords. They went around wearing sheep of skin and goats, needy, oppressed, and mistreated. The world didn't deserve them. They wandered around in deserts, mountains, caves, and holes in the ground. All these people didn't receive what was promised, though they were given approval for their faith. God provided something better for us so that we wouldn't be made perfect, so they wouldn't be made perfect without us. So then, let's also run the race that is laid out in front of us, since we have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us. Let's throw off any extra baggage, get rid of the sin that trips us up, and fix our eyes on Jesus, faith's pioneer and perfecter. He has endured the cross, ignoring the shame, for the sake of the joy that was laid out in front of him, and sat down on the right side of God's throne. This is the word of the Lord. Our responsive reading today is from Psalm 80, and that's found on page 801 and 802. We're actually going to do verses 1 through 3, and then 14 through 19. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. In the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. And on to 14. Turn again, O God of hosts. Look down from heaven and see. Have regard for this vine, the stock which your right hand planted. They have burned it with fire and they have cut it down. May they perish at the rebuke of your countenance. But let your hand be upon those of your right hand, the ones whom you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. Restore us, O Lord, God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. The hymn of preparation is Seek Ye First. It's number 405. Ask and eat. 
it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Our gospel lesson today comes from the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 49 through 56. Please rise in spirit or body for the reading of the gospel. Hear now what Jesus said. I came to cast fire upon the earth. How I wish that it was already ablaze. I have a baptism I must experience. How I am distressed until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, I have come to instead bring division. From now on, a household of five will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will square off against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, and mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. Jesus also said to the crowds, when I see... When you see a cloud forming in the west, you immediately say it's going to rain, and indeed it does. And when the south wind blows, you say, a heat wave is coming, and it does. Hypocrites. You know how to interpret conditions on earth and in the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret the present time? This, too, is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Almighty God, may the words of my mouth and indeed the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. I had a roommate when I lived in Texas when I was going to grad school at Texas A&M. His name was Cliff, and Cliff was the son of a United Methodist pastor, but he was in, uh, he was in wildlife and fisheries. But Cliff was also a runner. We went to church together, that's how we met, but he was a, he was a runner. He was a cross-country runner, or he had been in college. And um, every morning, he would get up at 4.30 or 5 o'clock, and he would go running with the Texas A&M cross-country team. He would get up, and he would run around the campus, and Texas A&M's campus is so he said, he said he ran about ten miles before uh, before he got uh, showered and went to school every morning. So he would go about ten miles, and he'd come back, and I would be getting up, and he'd be coming in from a ten mile run, and um, I, I just I thought that was the most insane thing that I'd ever experienced. But I asked him one day. I said, "Why, why do you go then? Why do you why do you go uh, so early?" And he said, "Well, that's when." That's when the, the track team, that's when they, they run. And I said, but couldn't you just run on your own? It's, you're a runner. You can run on your own. You don't have to do that. And he, and he would always say, look, I, I, I don't run as well without other people. Richard, is that true? It's true, right? I don't run as well without other people. So I said, okay. I'm going to keep getting up later than you, but but he he kept running. For five years I was out there, and Cliff ran, man. He ran. He ran with the track team, and he ran, and he, he stayed in shape because of it. Because he ran better with other people. He ran better with those who encouraged him, with those who held him accountable, with those who were waiting on him, with those who were beside him, with those that he himself could encourage. thought about that as I was getting ready for this sermon this week. In Hebrews... At the end of 11 and the beginning of 12, 
the author begin keeps talking about keeps talking about these these forebears in faith, the people who came before before him, before the church that existed at the moment, that were examples. And, and then kind of brings it home in this metaphor of the race, of running the race. And I thought of Cliff as he would run with others and who would encourage him. And I also thought about the Catholic tradition, the Roman Catholic tradition. Most of you know the Roman Catholic tradition has saints. They, they elevate the memory of people to sainthood. There's no definitive listing of saints, but it's estimated that there are more than 10,000 recognized saints by the Roman Catholic Church. And these, the stories about the saints, they, they're designed to give comfort and to provide examples of those who have persevered in faith, who have, who have accomplished some great thing thanks to God and their trust in God. Much like that, traditional African and Native American and Asian communities, have tra- they have traditions of, of ancestor veneration. Not necessarily worship, but ancestor veneration where much the same as, as sainthood in the Catholic tradition you have you remember those who've come before you who provide examples whose, whose stories give you strength. Protestants like United Methodists, like we are, we have been leery about both ancestor veneration and and kind of veneration of the saints, and oftentimes for good reason, but I think it would do us good to pay more attention to those. We come back to Hebrews where, where the author is continues from last week, tells these stories uh, of the faithful from the past. About amazing things that have happened when people have put their faith and put their trust in God. Because that's what faith is. It's this, it's this trust in the things that you can't see because God has promised them. Amazing things have happened when people have put their trust in God. And he he begins to list these after Abraham that we read last week. He talks about Moses. Moses who was raised in the household of the Pharaoh. But the rest of his people were enslaved. And so he, after he runs away and he comes back, he, he helps liberate his people the Israelites, the Hebrews. And as they're leaving, Pharaoh has a change of heart and he takes his whole army to to rush after the Hebrews. Because because they have been faithful, God parts the waters so that they can cross and get away from the greatest army in the world. And he talks about Joshua, who is who was the successor to Moses. Moses passed along his role to Joshua. And Joshua, as, they, as he brings the people in to the promised land, and they begin to, to, to battle the, the Canaanites and the other people who were there, they, they come to Jericho, which is this great walled city, and there's no way that these rough and tumble Nomads are going to be able to take a city with that kind of wall, but God tells them to march around the, the city, and they do. They march around the city because they, they trust that God has a plan for them, and the, and the walls fall. And Hebrews talks about Rahab, who was a prostitute in one of the cities that they are going into, and some spies go, and they, they're scoping everything out. The local authorities are hunting for them and and Rahab hides them. Helps them get away. and Because of that, she and her family are are saved. And he goes on and on and talks about the the judges 
those who led the people and defended them against all odds, even when they were coming against the armies of, of people who were more well-armed than them, who were more numerous than them. And he talks about David, the great king of the golden age of Israel and the ancestor of Jesus. And he talks about Samuel, the great prophet, and all the prophets, the other prophets who faced persecution and danger to proclaim God's word and mission. Hebrews says that though through faith they conquered kingdoms, they brought about justice, they realized promises, they shut the mouths of lions, they put out raging fires, escaped from the edge of the sword, found strength and weakness, were mighty in war, routed foreign armies, received back their dead. Of course, it wasn't all good. They also suffered persecution. They were tortured. They experienced public shame. They were taunted. They were whipped. They were put in chains. They were put in prison. They were stoned to death. They were cut in two and they died by the sword. None of that sounds really good. So many of them, it says, did not receive what was promised to them. They never saw their promises fulfilled. And yet they persevered. They persevered because they believed that God would keep God's promises. That God would do great things often through them. And they may not live to see it. They may not experience it. But it wasn't about them. They believed that God was doing great things. And even if they had to suffer for it, God would continue on to keep God's promises even after they were gone. These are just some of the stories of faith from the Old Testament and the New Testament. These are our forebears. These are the people who came before us. Who gave shape and still give shape to our faith and our lives. But he says, the author of Hebrews, that God provided something better for us so that these folks would not be made perfect without us. Because see, the story is not about them. This is what it comes down to. The stories that we tell about the great saints, the stories that we tell about those who've come before us, they aren't about them. This is why... This is why the author of Hebrews says that this this is a race that we are in. And it's not just a race by ourselves. This is a relay race. You all know what a relay race is, right? It's one where you race on a team. And each lap, one person races and they hand a baton off to the next person. And then they race. And each runner... Each lap determines how well the next runner will do. If you ever watch the Olympics or, or the national games, what you have is, is man, they're, they're running. And then you see, as he, comes, he or she comes around the corner, someone else starts running along. And as they hit that, as they hit that place where they have to turn over the baton, they... they turn it over, and then that next person begins to to run the race, and they keep going and going and going. And each person is responsible for their own leg, but they're also responsible for what the next person does. If you mess up the handover, you're going to end up losing the race. This is why it's so important that we tell these stories about the saints, about those who have come before us. Remembering them is not just about telling nice stories about the past. It's not just saying, oh, isn't it nice that we have these great, these great stories from once upon a time? Isn't it great how good faith used to be? How good religion used to be? How good Christianity used to be? That's not what we're doing here. We remember them because... We have to acknowledge that we are still running the race that they started. We learn from them, yes. We take heart from their trials, absolutely. We are strengthened by their triumphs, 
Yes. And sometimes we have to learn from the mistakes that they made. But at the end of the day, it's not about them any more than it's about us. We tell stories about those who came before us in faith because they kept their eyes on Christ. Even when they made mistakes. Even when they weren't perfect. And they weren't. Because when they, you, you, they kept their eyes on Christ, it wasn't their faith that got them where they ended up. It was the faith of Jesus Christ. Jesus began the race. His faith sustained them. Just like His faith sustains us. It's Jesus. It's Christ who sustains us. It's Christ who came before us. It's Christ who started the race. Who, who went before us and who perfected the faith that we proclaim. Even when we're not perfect. They kept their eyes on Christ. And so we tell their stories so that we can be part of them. Even though they couldn't see the future, they were able to give us the gift of knowing the great love and grace that Christ offers. Of knowing God's great acts of love for us. Once upon a time, in times past, in the person of Jesus Christ, but also so that we can recognize that we have been handed this faith now, today, and we can recognize that, that we get to experience Christ's great grace now. We get to experience God's love for us now. Not just once upon a time, but today. Someone once said that faith is planting a tree that will provide shade for our children. It's running a race that we may never see the finish line. But we're part of we're part of that race. We run it. We may not have started it and we may not finish it, but we have been handed the faith. We have been handed this knowledge of God's love for us. We also know it doesn't end with us. Hebrews calls, calls this the great cloud of witnesses. That as we run, we are surrounded. As we live and experience God's love, we are surrounded by those who have come before us. We're surrounded by their example, by their devotion, by, by what we can learn from them, good and bad. But it didn't end with them, and it doesn't end with us. We keep our eyes on Christ, and we hand it off ourselves, just as we have had it handed to us. Because it's not all up to us. Isn't that good news? That this is not all up to us. That, that the kingdom of God does not depend upon us. We're just part of it. We're part of the story. We're part of the race. But we don't do it by ourselves. It's not all up to us. This has been going long before we came along and it will be going long after we go. But we are invited into something bigger than ourselves. We are invited to participate in Christ's death and resurrection for our sakes and for the sake of those who will come after us. We are invited to participate in the kingdom of God in, in feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and doing justice for the outcast. To do good in this world. Not because we can fix everything, but because we, we are called to be part of what God is doing. We, we are a part of the cloud of witnesses. We are not just surrounded by it, but we are part of it. And as we have been handed the faith, that Christ began, 
We hand it to those who come after us as well. We live as faithful members of the body of Christ, as the kingdom of God. And we, ha- and we give it to someone else. We live so that others see Christ's work and, and, and love and grace through us. Because we are tied together. We are tied together in the Holy Spirit. And we are running the race running towards Christ. And we encourage others as we are encouraged by others. We give examples to others as we have been given examples. And we keep running. We keep running. We keep running. So that others run even further. And we can be witnesses to God's love together. I asked him, why do you why do you get up and run when you could run by yourself? And he said, because I run faster when I run with others. I run better when I run with others. So do we. We keep our eyes on Christ. We look to our right and our left and we are surrounded by those not just who have come before us, but who are still with us. Who will come after us. We celebrate and give thanks to the Christ who has lived and died for us. And we proclaim it so that all generations In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are so blessed to be able to go to God in prayer today with one another, surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Gathered as your people, O God, we offer the concerns of our life and the world, saying, God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the universal church. May discord among denominations yield to unity and a common commitment to share the good news of Christ. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the world. Prod us to engage in acts of mission and service that further the kingdom and honor the care that God has given us. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who hold authority in government, enable policymakers to enact justice, transforming places of violence and conflict into havens of respite and peace. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in our community who are suffering the burden of illness, distress, or any kind of pain. God of mercy, hear our prayer. We remember all those who have died and joined the great cloud of witnesses in heaven. God of mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those that we lift up now, either out loud or in our hearts. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Creator, you inspire us to trust in the things we cannot see and to ground our faith in your promises to us. Give us the clarity of your vision and make us ready to serve you as we await your return. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I would invite our usher to come forward as we prepare for the giving of God's tithes and our offerings. Mindful of the abundance we have received in Christ, we offer ourselves and our gifts to the world.
Let us pray. We trust, O God, in your provision and loving kindness. Use these gifts in our lives that we might bear your fruit with praise and thanksgiving. We ask this in the confidence of your mercy and love. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Since Jesus Came Into My Heart. It's in the Faith We Sing hymnal. It's number 2140. We'll sing verses 1 and 5. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought Since Jesus came into my heart I have light in my soul for which long I had sought when Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like the sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know Since Jesus came into my heart And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go Since Jesus came into my heart Since Jesus came into my heart since Jesus came into my heart Floods of joy o'er my soul Like the sea billows roll Since Jesus came into my heart Before we go, just a cu- You could be seated. Uh, <laughs> before we go, just a couple of announcements. Uh, we will uh, be back with uh, online Bible study in September. Our United Methodist women are collecting uh, donations for Shower Power of Jackson. Shower Power is, uh, uh, it, it sounds like a car wash, it's not. It, it's, uh, it's this great organization that began as, um, as uh, kind of a roving thing that, gave, that let uh, our homeless neighbors uh, take showers. And it has evolved into much more than that, into kind of a, a collection space for for uh, folks and their needs. And so um, they're collecting, and you can see a wish list on the back of all the things that they need if you're able to, to give. Our, do we bring it here? Okay, there's a sign right across from the office, and you can leave your donations there. Is there a particular time or just... collecting through September 18th, and they'll deliver that week. So thank you. Uh, and I know that's going to be a, a really a real blessing for that group and the, the community that they serve. Uh, we're going to have, uh, as, as we do every month, we'll have uh, Theology on Tap, not this Wednesday or the next, but the next. Because I think that's the last day of the month. We always do it on the last Wednesday of the month. So um, that will be when we have uh, Theology on Tap. Are there any other announcements that anybody has? If not, remember, God is present to us, calling us to attend to our lives and our world, confident in God's provision and direction. We go forth inspired, seeking reconciliation in places of division, honoring the plight of those on the margins, and filled with gratitude for God's promises. May the God of creation and restoration give you confidence in the daily tasks set before you. The God of love and compassion assure you of your heritage as a child of God. The God of guidance and inspiration mold you in God's image. And the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you and remain with you always. Amen.